<clears throat> Welcome everybody to the code class. Talking about codes, as we were praying just a moment ago, I mentioned Art Levitt, and the teaching he put out uh, <clears throat> on YouTube. It's got some really amazing codes in there that uh, just, you know, mathematically, when you realize the, what you're looking at, it's just is mind boggling. Um, so I thought I'd share some of that today, but also some of the codes that you guys are working on. Um, you guys still working on things like the Jubilee and. Yes, uh, we're, I'm, I've been hammering on the uh, Ephesians 3, the, the word dispensation. Ah, very hammering good. on that word, and we, fi we figured it out. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll save that for after. Uh, very good. That's one thing I've been studying here recently is, uh, as I told you in the last class, um, the dispensationalism, um, Darby, Schofield, uh, where this false doctrine came from people think it's just a myth uh, it's actually historical fact um this is where the doctrine came from so I'm, it's really cool that you're already starting to break that down with um dispensationalism really yeah well it's, it's not even the word dispensation <laughs> it's been changed really? um yeah if you don't mind i'll share my screen so we can show sure. this to you sure and many people don't realize that Schofield is the father of all of these catchphrases and terms that you hear today. Um, you know, like blessed hope, uh, and yeah. Okay. Um, the word is, is actually th three words or two words. Now I have, to, I have to stop and I have to explain this to you, to the audience and whoever else listens, listens to this video. Uh, I just actually finished revealing this to Dr. Pigeon, and he is literally stunned. He has no words. All I got were exclamation marks. <laughs> so, um, the, the, okay, what this is is, is we're, we're looking in the Aramaic the same way that Ezra divided the words up. Okay, if you notice, you know, when you got code, uh, this the, the blank code here you see the the high the gray and the black letters there are, that's actually where you divide the words to, to get the words divided like this and this is what Ezra did is he took he took the ancient manuscripts and he added the spaces in between the words so you wouldn't have to learn that ancient process of dividing the word that's where the word Dividing the word, right, right. rightfully dividing the word comes from. Well, you can actually do that with the Aramaic as well. And I've been showing this to Dr. Pigeon, and he's literally floored. So what I'm doing is, uh, as I took the uh, Aramaic word here for dispensation, and you, you can actually divide it up into words. Different, it's actually more than one, uh, one word. It's one big word with a bunch of smaller words stuck together. So what Paul, what my theory is, is that Paul was using the Aramaic language in order to pass secret messages between the apostles. And Dr. Pigeon was floored because he said this, is, this actually can explain the discrepancy in the translation between the Aramaic and the Greek. And he's 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 actually doing some work on that, and he was he was really happy to see this. If you if you take the Dalit Bet Resh out of that, that's the word speaking, and this is what the uh, uh, actually Ephesians. Let me go there. I don't really know exactly the best way to explain that but uh, well where's the uh, word dispensation oh yeah here it is dull right there the word dispensation okay um oh I've never explained this before, so I'm. I'm uh, no, it's all right. Take your time. 
Okay, you have the word speaking, and the word heard is in there. So the next word in there, it's, it's the word speaking, and the word yobel is there, or jubilant. Wow. So the whole, the whole point in, of this is that it's talking about an era or a, a specific time frame uh, where the mystery, and actually Dr. Pigeon just went through that last uh, t Thursday night about the mysteries and, and the, the mystery of salvation and the mystery of the, of the Jubilee or the Yobel are actually intertwined because that's really the essence of what uh, um, Luke 4.18 Spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight of, of to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Okay. So we're in that era, and Paul confirms that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, For he hath, I have heard thee, in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So this is the mystery that was revealed when Yeshua declared the Yobel. Um, so that Yobel, that where we, we are in that era where the, of salvation and the Jubilee is a part of that, okay? But if you look at the word uh, coded there, you have to take the rash and you have to use it twice in order to get the word speaking. But this here, uh, jubilant, is a reference to, uh, here, put it here, noon, rash noon wav means jubilant you, rash. Noon, love, jubilant you, and it's being used in. <laughs> it's making a direct connection between the yo bell. Okay, so you have this word speaking, hearing, and speaking about what Yeshua did uh, by proclaiming the Jubilee. Okay. And the dispensa dispensation is really not the word to be using. It's more, more like the era of the Jubilee or the generations. I don't know if that would be the right word, but actually that's what I was thinking. That's this word was, and I misinterpreted it. But, uh, but anyways, you have this in the code right here. And if you use the Yobel, Hey, Wav, Hey, Yod, Wav, Bet, Lamed, the Yobel comes up at an ELS of 44. This is a row skip. Uh, so anyways, this is, this is proving a, a point about uh, dividing the word in Aramaic. <laughs> you can actually use the same technique and divide it. So, so you're looking at Second Corinthians in the Peshitta, for those that do not understand. Um, Actually, it's for Ephesians 3. I, I, I looked up at the very far. Uh, Sorry, that's, yeah, that's okay. Um, so, to, so to be about, clear, it's Ephesians 3, 2 that you're, you're right. looking at. Right. And the word dispensation that's mentioned in, in Ephesians 3. Let me go back. Ephesians 3, 1. You'll see it mentioned in verse 2. And then again in verse 9. Here the word this. Yeah. It doesn't even use it. Anyways, you get the so, point. So this, we are talking about the rightly dividing and the rightly dividing of time, actually, because Yahuwah measures in the Shemitah and in, in, uh, Jubilee cycles. So you have this word, I, I don't even know how to pronounce it, the 
Madhabaranita. <laughs> it's, it's a really long word. It, that's why I looked at that one. Wow, what that's a it, pretty long what word. What does it show in the in the transliterated? Um, over, well, it's not. It's going to be in the Greek, isn't it? Wow. If we looked at Bible Hub. Yeah. yeah. So when we're looking at this, uh, hold on, let me show you, let me actually show you the, the coding that we did. <laughs> this is going to really floor you. It's bigger. So you have hey, wav, hey, yod, wav, bet, lamed, the yobel. But right in the middle of that, you have sign right here. And then this is the word secret, mystery. Uh, this is talking about the second coming and the consummation right here. Uh, here you have the word people, amum. That's the word being used for Gentile in here. Um, then you have Moshiach. Some, yeah, the, some of these actually Brother Scott translated, and I can't remember what they are, but uh, if we look at that, but if we look at it just like this with, with uh, no roast skip in here, you have, you have Lamed code written here. And this verse is from Ephesians 3, 8. To me, who am the least of all the saints, hath his grace been given, that I should announce among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Messiah. Okay, and you have written code right there. And the word unsearchable riches is ayin wav taoresh he. And then you have dalet, memshin, yochet. Aleph, that's Moshiach, the unsearchable riches of Moshiach, and you have Lam, it could be B4 or two or or written. I think the Lam, it also in indicates being written, so this could be written code, and you have the Yobel here. And again, you have Aleph, Wav, Tau, the word sign. Um, so that's, this is what I've been working on. I actually have a, Great stuff. Here, there. There we go. That's what I was looking for. The unsearchable riches. But would you have it that you have a group of Hebrew cryptologists searching this and it just so happens we're the ones who have figured this out that Paul could have very well been using the Aramaic to write hidden messages between the apostles. Yeah. If you look at if you look at the uh, the Hebrew version of the Brit Hadashah, you'll see that the words are all divided nicely, and it's almost like the Hebrew is very properly displayed, and there's no no need to divide a whole lot because it's. It's actually laid out really nice. It's almost laid out too nicely. <laughs> it's too it's it's too proper, and it's like, okay, could they have taken the 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 English translation and translated that to Hebrew in some of the scripture, or or are they getting that confused? And was it the Aramaic that was originally? used in some of the scripture because that's where we're finding um, uh, hidden hidden messages you know so yeah well, there, is, that, there is archaeological evidence that the, the disciples both spoke and r recorded in Aramaic uh, you, you know it's even confirmed with Josephus that the Jews or those in in Jerusalem in that time primarily spoke Aramaic. They did not speak Greek as some pastors teach. Um, it's pretty ludicrous. So what Paul was actually telling, let me pull up 
pull this up. Timothy and dividing the word. <laughs> Get this. So what, what Paul was actually telling uh, Timothy in, in this coded message, he's telling him to go north to Damascus where he went. This is actually what, what, uh, what could have happened is Paul went to Damascus and he learned how to rightfully divide the word using the technique of dividing each word up in the ancient scripture because what he was getting from the Sanhedrin and the, he was a Talmud dean uh, was all corrupted. So Yeshua was proving to Paul in the ancient scripture that undiv that was undivided the actual truth. So he had to go back. He had to divide everything up again, just like Ezra did to get the full truth. And what he was telling Timothy in this coded message to go do the same thing. You know, it needs to be said that at the time that Paul is writing this, there is no New Testament, guys. The rightly dividing the word when he is talking about is the Tanakh. Um, no question about it. And he is absolutely right when he says that it was one continuous stream of letters all the way up into the time of Ezra. Um, right? So... Um, this is very highly likely that, that there's something more deep going on than what pastors teach, which is Raleigh dividing the word, uh, with dispensational is uh, that's for the Jews. This is for the Gentiles over here. Um, that's totally wrong. Totally is. false. Yeah, it is. So you have these words in here, this word here, res, that's the word secret or hidden. And here you have uh, Rash Aleph Yotal. This word here is the words to see or to be shown. And this word, where is it now? Uh, this word here, again, uh, that's hidden. This is the word blood. La Lamed man, that's the word blood. So I think he was talking about his heritage of being Hebrew because of the la the language, <laughs> what, what he's talking about here. Um, if you take this word as a whole, that, that's where they get the word dividing from, but it can either be used as uh, divide or more properly slicing, or you can use it as the word minister, ministering. So some translations will use the word ministering, others, uh, more specifically, the King James will use the word dividing. But it's not really the word dividing, it's the word slicing, as if you were going to hold something up and slice it in pieces like a loaf of bread. Okay, so that, that's what it's talking about. And this is how actually how you would take the, the ancient scripture that, uh, that's undivided, and you would literally take it and slice it in different parts. So it's not really the word dividing, it's the word slicing. Yeah. Now, the, the, the thing about this is um, because you can permutate um, so many, like, like we call it abacus effect, right? The abacus where you, you can move these beads, um, but you can't jump other beads and, and move like that. But you can permutate them in different pairs and different um, uh, patterns, right? So if you've got one continuous stream of letters, and even if you speak and read Aramaic Hebrew, it would be quite difficult for your brain to divide the words up as you're trying to read um, this continuous stream of letters, right? Because many um, possibilities, you have to decipher that in the moment to know exactly what is being said, because... <laughs> Like I said, because of this abacus effect, you could get so many different permutations of words and phrases in just one line of, of uh, text. So um, it is very plausible that this was still being done um, because text, you know, if they're writing continuously and there's no breaks in between the words, they got to first figure out where the breaks are before they can know what is being said, right? 
it's it's on the surface it's encoded uh what it was it's encrypted in other words terrence did right. you have a question let's let's see what he's got here maybe we can answer that real quick yeah you can well you just answered one i just wanted to confirm that i heard someone say that originally there were no spaces right there was i never heard that before but what what is ordinarily the meaning of dispensation that we take it to mean it, it's a it's a form of um uh sectioning off or or measure uh error is is you know there are different errors that we are been have been going through and so this is generally the 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 uh, interpretation in hebrew now the the king james and english translations have taken that some somewhere else um you know into the dispensational theory that there's the church age there's the age of grace uh, there's the age of Moses and uh, or the under the law, um, which is contrary to what the scripture says. He's the same yesterday, to, to, today, and forever. So, um, it's what I'm talking about rightly dividing the the Hebrew. Go ahead, Chris. From, from what I'm seeing here, there are different seasons of your bells. Is the proper way to look at that? Not dispensation and dividing up the different time, times. Okay, there are there are different seasons. Like uh, when Yeshua came, he he brought the acceptable of the year of salvation. Uh, in Isaiah forty nine, we're looking at the acceptable year of restoration, like uh, like Cyrus did. Uh, actually, when Cyrus came into power, he he made a a, a national international decree that all slaves be set free all debts repaid and all land be got yeah. given back to so there were there was actually a decree uh in in cyrus's time um but here i have on the screen what brother jonathan is talking about i can even make it bigger you you see how the words just run together the code program in the matrix is is based on the raw language. There's no jots and tittles. There's no spaces in between, and all the ending letters uh, like this here, the calf is not. You don't see the big ending letter. It's just calf. Okay, so they had to figure all this out how to how to divide this, and it was an art. It was an ancient art. And they did this on purpose, or Yahuwah did this on purpose, in order to hide things from the, the Gentiles, the, the, or I should say the rest of the world. Yeah, so what, you know, what, it, what I was trying to get across a moment ago is on the, it's the first level of encryption on the surface is they're right. all running together. Uh, if, if Chris either changed the, the color to all black or all blue, you you would clearly see what, what okay. we're talking about. Right now, everything is divided between color. Um, without you do you you just did the background. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, colors there. Bring up. Yeah. The better. You did well. You just you highlight. You still see the contrast between the two colors, but if they were all, yeah, you got to change. Uh, and I'm not sure how you do that. I just know you can. A text letter color, is that it? Right. I'll, I'll, I'll just change it to something a little bit more easier to see. <laughs> there. Yeah. Actually, I changed the white to... Uh, there is a way to change all the letters to green or all white. And you would see just this continuous line. And if you didn't know uh, how to... Oh, do okay, yeah, I, I can do that. It would be... Really difficult to read. I mean, unless, yeah. There you go. There you go. Look, I try to read that. Yeah. This is what they had to, to to interpret thousands of years ago. This is why Ezra did what he did. But as soon as Ezra did that, the Masoretes came right along and and started corrupting the word with the jots and the tittles. Yeah. Mm. So the, the, this is when it was an ancient art of dividing the word knowing where the breaks are in between each word. You, you can take that same technique and you can apply it to the Aramaic now, like this. <laughs> now, now, most 
uh, Hebrew males in, in this time had studies in Torah or in Tanakh and where they were, re, they were writing, they do that even today where they, tra they transcribe down the scripture, right? So, so everybody's a scribe, right? They're, they're writing the word. So they have to know where to divide these words or it's just letters, <laughs> you know? So that term rightly dividing the word then relates specifically to this process we believe so. Yeah. Figuring out where the spaces are. Yeah, and that and that interpretation of what that means has been twisted into something that's completely different. Uh, and literally saying, "Rip the scriptures up." That's for the Jews and that's for the Gentiles, which is completely oh. uh, wrong way of thinking about it. Um, at mm -hmm. the time that they were speaking these things, or Paul's writing these things, there were no New Testament. Right. That that got put together m much later. Right. They're talking about the Tanakh. And uh, this is something that was passed down father to son, writing, the, writing things down. Um, and that's and therefore, that's how they knew the scripture. They weren't just reading it. They were recording it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, there, you know, the schools that they had in those times, it wasn't like what we got today. We got math and arithmetic. You know, they their studies were were biblical. They were, they were, it was the word. This was what was written. Uh, this is where their letters were, uh, where their language existed, right? So they would have, this is where the studies would have been. Um, they were also charged with getting it right too. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, it, and of course this did, this did exclude females. This was mostly father to son kind of um, stuff, which still happens today with the Jews. Uh, but, but when a young boy is bar mitzvahed, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of this, uh, involved where they're, you're tightly closed to the scripture. Uh, you know, it's many times they go to yeshiva and this is all they're doing all day long is Torah, <laughs> writing it, memorizing it. And that's religious. Now I'm not talking about the secular Jews. I'm talking about the very orthodox religious. They're like Dr. Glazerson. Yeah. His son would have done this would have would have wrote this stuff down and memorized yeah so we're we're looking at something that's been very very distorted in scripture in your, in your english bible this whole thing has been distorted and uh when you put everything back into place it makes a lot of sense big big time so that's that was my presentation very good, Chris. I agree with uh, with um, your interpretation of that. I, I think it's closely related to the the Hebrew scriptures and the fact that uh, the div dividing came with with Ezra. Up until that point, it was it was continuous line, and only those sages that knew where the breaks were could do it mentally. In other words, it was a brain function automatic uh, where they saw where the word end and another one began. Right, so. So this isn't talking about a co coffee dif dispenser. Right. We're not dispensing coffee. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 we're living in a, in a time where the uh, Yobel that was declared by Yeshua is coming, coming to a close. Salvation has been completed and he's coming back to get his believers and, and, the door will be closed. Unfortunately, there's, there are doors going to be closed on, on a lot of people. And uh, so there's a message, there's a message in there too, the sermon. Yeah. All right. Then thank, else, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Anybody else got codes before I, uh, I show Art's presentation? Well, uh, no, but I just wanted to give glory to Yahuwah for all that he's doing. Amen. Man. The and showing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Amazing stuff. What'd you say, Doug? Uh, I have my uh, uh, second witness code. Okay. You have the floor. There you go. It's rendering. Uh, Brother Doug's got a whopper for us, man. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to uh, actually uh, uh, document. Uh, there, there is so much to it. Um, if, you, if, if you remember my other uh, 
other code that was in the, in Luke four use the same access term except when I when I started to look at at it in Luke four, uh, I I thought it was uh, destroyed, uh, which would have been uh, a resh uh, summit, but I I looked and I saw it had a uh, a negative skip, and I thought, gee, you know, the uh, the um, the uh, Yobel has a positive skip, but the um, destroyed had a had a negative skip. So I thought, well, what is it? Is it a word when it's in when it goes in the proper direction? And and yes, it is. Uh, Samat resh hey means apostasy, uh, turning away. Uh, rebellion. So uh, it, it literally means apostasy or rebellion in, in the Jubilee. So I searched for this term and I came up uh, with uh, one other uh, place that, uh, that uh, um, this term came up uh, with um, all of the uh, uh, all of the terms that were in the uh, in the uh, uh, previous one, and in the same in in the same way, uh, like uh, Babylon uh, used the uh, the uh, uh, first bet in the uh, in in the jubilee, and uh, it it uh, uh, goes off from there. So it it's exactly the same way, and uh, I found. Uh, uh, all of the other other terms that were in the first first matrix completely every last one of them are there um, uh, and they're all all very prominent um, we added a added a, a number of words uh, um, Chris was kind enough to uh, you know uh, give me a lot of a lot of pointers and that and came up with a with a, a new one um, uh, he called it, uh, uh, you know, um, I I call it uh, from ruin, from destruction, from from corruption, and it it uh, goes up here, and here is uh, in the ruach is is right next to it. Um, and um, do, you, do you remember, brother Jonathan, the word destroyer? The, the word uh, mem shen tao yo or mem mem shen het yo tao. If right. you take the yod out and you just have mem shen het tao, you would have also oil. That's also the Aramaic word for destroyer as well. It's also oil, but I just want to throw that in there. Right, it, it, it has a, a couple of different uh, meanings. It's that, also got um, the root word from Mashiach in there too, minus the O, Mim, Shin, Chet. Yep. Yes. Yes, there's, there's, there's a lot in here. And um, uh, we found that um, um, uh, Chris came up with the uh, word vengeance and uh, actually uh, Really need to uh, show the actual matrix itself so that we can we can see it uh, see it properly because there's there's an awful lot to document so um, let me drop out of this one and uh, and uh, bring up the actual matrix itself. Uh, I I still have that one matrix open without a row skip. That remember we were looking at that. I'd like to show that after you're finished. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, at any rate, um, um, okay. Here is the uh, here is uh, vengeance, and it is uh, Luke fourteen verse twenty one. And uh, this is this is uh, talking about. Um, oh boy. Um, Collecting the poor and diseased and lame and so on, and uh, let's see. I think I think there were some others in there, wasn't there? Um, maybe you remember better. Uh, 
than I do, Brother Chris. Um, there, there was the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, okay, what? Boy. Uh, well, uh, I, I know it's when, when they found the, uh, the Jew that uh, was a false prophet is in here somewhere um, uh, prominent with that too. And I, I don't remember where that was. Um, that's off the screen. I actually have that on my screen. I'll, sh I'll show that when you're finished. Yeah. And, and you were talking about the, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, they are jubilant. And I found that uh, uh, with uh, um, um, here, and it it follows uh, in the year of in the year of, and this is uh, uh, Yeshua. In the oh wow, uh, they are jubilant in the year of uh, uh, Yeshua. Awesome year of salvation, right? Yeah, yeah. So and and it um, it's in the, it's in there a, a number of times, and we uh, and where where is it? The, maybe it was. In, uh, I just wish I could remember where the, where that was. <laughs> but uh, uh, there there's a there was a lot that's added to it. The acceptable. And and that uh, that uh, um, uh, coincides with uh, 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 the spoken. And uh, where that, uh, there, let's see where 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 is the uh, spoken? Okay, here it is. The spoken is is here. And here and here, here with Yeshua, right at the end of Yeshua, Yeshua spoke. Okay. So uh, and uh, in the year of and and um, they are jubilant. So, um, like I said, everything that was in the original Luke four matrix that. Uh, uh, made up is is also in here, uh, and uh, I could. Uh, there were other times when this particular um, phrase uh, came up, but uh, uh, when when you put in all of the terms, it only had like one or two, and they were just all over the place. And this this just really fit. So okay. Well, like I said, I'm 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 going to be doing some documentation on this because each and every uh, um, uh, I, I hear here's one where in the ruin begins it says and and should be renewed in the spirit of your mind and um, and here is um, the word moon. here's here is the spirit and uh, right here is the spirit as well. Here is the Ruach right right there. So uh, everything just kind of fits together and touches each other and uh, it just, make, just makes a tremendous amount of sense. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish documenting and uh, I'll, I'll stop and let uh, uh, Chris share and uh, he's got some more goodies. 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 Goodies for the kitties. <laughs> um, okay, here's Brother Doug's access term, apostasy in Yobel. Okay, this line here is from Acts 13, 6. And when they had traveled over the whole island as far as the city Paphos, they found a certain man a sorcerer, a Jew, who was a false prophet and whose name was Barsuma. 
Okay, Barsuma is a picture of the false prophet that's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. We're all wondering who the false prophet is. I've always pointed towards somebody who's probably going to be uh, Hebrew or, I'll say it, Jewish, um, because of the way the wording is in uh, Revelation chapter 13. The horns, what's it going to do with the horns? I'll go there and I'll... Uh, where's my dragon? It's giving me a hand to say it's overcome the power. The word, la the lamb. There's something to do with about the, the, the lamb. Uh... Oh, yeah, I had two horns, yeah. And I beheld another beast came up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. That there is an Old Testament reference. i got to make the connection, so I'll try to do that later. But uh, this here is making reference to somebody who's a part of the Hebrew or Jewish, yeah, uh, probably a rabbi. Yeah, that's Aries, you know, the uh, of a male lamb is a ram. Mm -hmm. To hear that you have the word prophet and the word false here. And at the end you have bar, bed resh, and then suma, shen wav mem aleph. And this is a, this is a picture of the false prophet. Okay. Still, and, and it's right there. This is the word apostasy. In your bell and that's uh, you see the apostasy sitting right next to the false prophet in in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 so that's what Doug uh, Doug's table is revealing and it's interesting so that's the thing interesting thing about the codes we put in apostasy and we have the false prophet show up <laughs> in it <laughs> it's interesting Great stuff. Was that it, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, it was two-liner. Very simple. Anybody else got codes? All right. I've so got, to, oh. oh, go ahead, Jonathan. Go ahead, brother. I don't know. If you got codes, share them because I'm going to transition to uh, Art Levitt. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Um, I've been um, – let's see here. <laughs> okay, the fig tree, right? Matthew 34, am I right? You talking about the parable of the fig tree? That would be yes. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, we're talking about Israel. And I was thinking about um, uh, 1948, you know, the independence um, from uh, British jurisdiction and, and the Six Day War and all that happened. and um, and the anniversary that just happened last year. So <clears throat> I looked for, uh, I used, um, my access term here is budding of the fig tree. Pe, resh, het, tau, budding, tau, aleph, noon, hey, fig tree. And it comes up in Ezekiel. Um, underneath the access term right here, you're going to have um, the valley of the dry bones, right? He said unto me, prophesy over these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahuwah. So this is, um, this is uh, Ephraim and Judah coming together. Uh, right beneath it, you've got uh, verse 25. They shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. Wherein your fathers dwell, they shall dwell therein. They and their children and their children's children forever. And David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. But right here, through here is where it says, um, they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. I thought that was pretty significant because 
<clears throat> what you're going to have is you're going to have the year here in the plain text, 1948. Um, you've got olive tree over here in the plain text. It's going backwards. The same thing with the year here. You've got the day right here at a perfect skip of the page. It's um, the 5th of ER. And you've got the 5th of ER going through it again, sharing the olive here. And you also have the year, again, converging twice and sharing this het going through the day. So that's as far as I've got with this one. Uh, you, know, you also have fig tree here going vertically. <clears throat> and, you know, that's almost like pinpoint detail um, as far as um, looking for anything else. I, I haven't gotten that far yet, but for, for the day and the year to, to, to do all this w with these verses here, that's, I thought that was pretty wild. And can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. All right. All right. Good. So now we're going to fast forward to, <clears throat> okay. We're going to fast forward to 5778, which was uh, 2018. And you're going to have the year going through here, right here. Um, it's the Hei, Tau, Shin, Ayin, Het. It's 5778. And <clears throat> going right through the axis, sharing the Shin there is, it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years. And that's right there. At the end of 70 years, um, you're going to have, through through that line here, going horizontally, you're going to have the olive tree, Tet, or sorry, Tau, Olive, Noon, Hay. And then you're going to have the fruit of Pe, Resh, Yod, all going through there in the 70 years. So <clears throat> so he says, you know, when, when, when the tree bears its fruit, right? Um, in the beginning, it's just budding, you know, it's just, it's just starting to, to sprout. Now we're, now we're getting uh, fruit and it's getting ready to drop. <laughs> right. So, uh, coming off that, um, sharing, oh no, no, I'm sorry. For thus shall it be in the midst of the earth among the peoples as the beating of an olive tree. So right here where I have this highlighted, that's among the peoples, the beating of an olive tree. And the, the last, um, the Mem and peoples, that's this word right here. Hey, I and Mem, Yod Mem, that's peoples. Um, you've got from Jubilee, the, peop the people from the Jubilee um, thresh wow. like a wild olive tree. Wow. But yeah, you've got, here you've got temple, hey, Yod, Kaf, Lamed. And here you've got, uh, therefore, by this shall the iniquity of Jacob be ex expiated, and all the fruit of his taking away in his sin, where he makes the, all the stones of the altar. Now, we had that, that altar ceremony last, last fall. I was just about to say, didn't they just do that? Yeah, they had the altar ceremony. So you've got temple here. You've got the stones of the altar. You've got the stones going vertically right here, too. And with temple right underneath it going vertically. Yeah, they did sacrifice on that altar November 2018. Yeah, yeah. So it, it fits it fits the, the, the timeline pretty good here on this table. Um, you've got the generation from the Jubilee. Uh, down here you have the olive tree, the generation of. Or the generations, sorry, that's plural, I think, with the Tao there. But either way, uh, the generations of the olive tree. Um, you have olive tree here again. I didn't highlight it, but you have the year. Um, hey, Shin, Noon, Hey, um, Hashina, the year of the olive tree. Uh, and then here, this is, this is pretty good here. Uh, where is it? Okay, you're gonna see Yobel with um, the Yod and stones. Um, Yod, Bob, 
Bet Lamed, and that's in these two verses here. Oh, sorry. And it also shares the het, um, the same line that the het is in in the year here. It's, uh, uh, let's see, no, it's, it's not it. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain, she crieth out in her pangs. So have we been in thy presence, O Yahuwah. And here you have, it. like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs. So, oh, wait, wait, it's the same verse, isn't it? Um, we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the land. Neither are the inhabitants of the world come to life. So where you see we have been with child and we have been in pain, like travailing, that's, that's coming right through here, right in the axis. Um, I thought that was really like loud, you know? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any more louder than that. Uh, uh, prophetically. Yeah. The uh, child or the woman with child uh, in pain is also a reference to the time of sorrow because sorrow yeah. is, is a part of that translation as well. Yeah. Um, I have a uh, beginning of sorrows table that I was working on that this term here at the end of 70 years, it goes through that as well. I don't, I don't have it pulled up, but there's um, a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, going through here where the altar stones you have, the covenant with death shall be disannulled. Because this temple is, you know, if it's a one world religion, interfaithism type thing, you know, which they're talking about. <clears throat> It's pretty heavy because uh, you hear you have here where is it if the spirit of judgment where is he mm -mm -mm. oh yeah right here mm -mm. oh yeah right here as for the spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment. And that's right here. You see then over here you have, um, you have the, uh, the spirit of Yeshua. I thought that was really cool. I can find it. You have Purim there. Purim. Yeah. But see, that's the same. It's like the same word as fruit. Yeah. I noticed that. Um, where, where's that brother? Oh uh, yeah, in your axis term between the yod and the hay, down below. Oh, oh, the that's not right my axis. It's not my axis, but it can serve as an axis for sure. Oh yeah, right okay. here. Yeah, purse. Yeah, or per purum. Yeah, that's um. This shall be a sign unto thee. You shall eat this year which groweth of itself, and in the second year that's which springeth the same. The third year you sow and you reap and you plant vineyards. So, and that's going right, that's the say. that's this line right here, right above the, the fig tree. <clears throat> I thought that was pretty neat. And I'm trying to find this other term here in the plain text. Um, I've never seen it before. And it, when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow. No, I can't find it, but it's okay. So I, you know, it, it kind of like, I was just trying to uh, pinpoint uh, the prophetic narrative, you know what I mean? And um, uh, the de I was really blown away by the details. Uh, right here at the hay in the axis uh, of, of the year, you have, um, go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. Saith you who has said unto me, and watchman that shares the the hay and in, in the, the year there. So, <clears throat> to me, that's indicative of, you know, the watchmen are are are, you know, us as watchmen are are sounding the alarm. Essentially. Um, so yeah, that's that's it so far on this, and, and to have Yo Bell here in this, like as a woman with child. 
the draweth near the time of her delivery. Um, right, and isn't isn't there um, isn't there a there is a scripture talking about um, woman with you know newborns and a time of distress? Yes, right. yes. Um, um, I believe that's okay. You're let's see here. I think. You're referring to connected to a woe. Um, Seems like it. That was. I think that's in chapter sixty-six. Or it's it's in Isaiah, right? I cannot remember where that is, but it's it's um woe into the uh something like a before she travailed, she brought forth for her pain came. Is that it? No, she no, I'm talking about, man. you know, the child's already born. This, you know, they're, they're traveling. Um, they're being displaced. Uh, gosh, I can't think of it. Anyway, it's, it's, um, it's a time of distress. And uh, mm -hmm. there are clearly children and mothers and families involved. Yes. They're having to flee during this time. Yeah, flee from the mountains, yeah. and and don't, and don't go into your home to grab anything. There you go, Just Michelle. Go. Woe unto them that are with yeah. child and are nursing. So this is a newborn. That's right, baby, right, and that's they're right. nursing. That's right. Yeah. So yes, there you go. <clears throat> yeah. so, Very good, Michelle. Good, good catch. That's what I have. Awesome stuff, brother. Yeah. The tables, uh, Brother Scott and uh, Brother Doug, thank you very much you for sharing. You two guys, you, you two guys, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's not surprising, but it's it's very um, joyous and very exciting. It's like, wow, you know, I, to see this being revealed is, it's, it's very exciting stuff. It is. Uh, and we know it's there. We know it's there. You know, it's, it's not, like I said, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it almost feels wrong to say it's not surprising, but it, it's to be expected. You know, he's, we knew, we know at this point it's, this isn't, um, uh, it's not a theory anymore. It's, it's not something that's far fetched. It's we're seeing, we keep seeing continuous results, continuous. Yeah. And like I said before, I, I just, when I think I've seen it all and, and have seen the best, you know, you see something better and it's, has an outpour. Has good clips. Uh, that needs to be said. The the patterns, and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. With Art Levitt, he's going to give some examples of you know what are real codes and what are just kind of random nonsense, right? Because sure. codes are hidden in these layers of uh, possibilities, right? Because people have choices, and so it's all these possibilities in there right so is it, we're going to see how to distinguish between the two uh, i thought that i mean it's only 72 views on the video i thought it was a great presentation it's sad that nobody really got to see it um but i'm going to share some of it with you guys because i think it's important to to you know learn this um he is um he gives a critique like as i said earlier in this class of great one of glazerson's table he doesn't use his name you just know it's him because you know, Glazerson's tables are very easily identified. Uh, and besides that, he has his name uh, in there. Uh, Glazerson fi finds his own name in a table. Um, the reason why he points this table out is, um, well, one, he, he points out there is a political agenda that, that Glazerson has, right? He doesn't have tight clusters, um, and so he kind of goes after him on, on that point, as you'll see in, in a a few moments. So is there any, any other codes before I uh, transition to um, Art Levitt? Um, he is a secular Jew, I would call him. Not not secular. He is uh, non, he's not an Orthodox. So he's, what do they call it? Reformer Jew? I don't know. Um, but he studies, uh, he studies, he's been in the codes for 20 something years. So he, he knows what he's talking about. Let's take a look at that. You're, you're holding us in suspense, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to make sure we got, I know. <laughs> got credit to him because yeah. um, he oh, yeah. mentions this in his broad, in his presentation that, you, you know, the, the ethics of doing codes is, is to 
you know, credit the one who finds a code, right? Even if you're showing their code, which by the way, I try to always do. All right, so here it is. So there are some of the patterns, and it's really important to focus on patterns, not just random arrangements. Uh, there's three main ones. There's one dimensional, like this example says codes in, in Hebrew, in yellow, with the word true afterwards. So it's a one dimensional code. You don't need the vertical because the skip is so small. <clears throat> the second pattern is called extensions. And we see that in this example, the code of God, yellow and red, also true. So the extended word, uh, after finding the code of God, we notice the extension says true. So that's in another, that's a very important form pattern. And the third pattern is clustering, which we will see quite a bit. Um, here, three names of God are in a very close cluster vertically. What? They all have the same yeah. skip, so they're all parallel. The ducks are in the way of the uh, now, why do I focus so much on patterns? Because the more rare something is, the more amazing it is. We all know that from life, but when you're looking at codes in the Torah, you have to get used to what is what is happening a lot versus what is happening maybe only one time in the whole text. There's 300,000 letters in the Torah, so any, any text the size that size, you will find what looks like uh, amazing coincidences. But only if you know how rare something is, will you be able to measure it. So let's see what goes. Uh, so so let's say let, let's 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 look at the difference between. This is really great how he breaks this down. Prediction. Uh, prediction one is you will see a taxi in New York. And lo and behold, I go to New York and I cross the street and I see four or five taxis. There's one taxi, but I'm seeing them left and right. Whoever gave you this prediction is he's a genius. But not really because we know that taxis are, you can't avoid taxis in New York. So this is the night and day difference that we're talking about for real codes versus non codes or trivial codes that are unfortunately. Um, out there much more often than I'd like to, to see in the web and, and, and even in books. <clears throat> so here's an example of. Okay, so now you can see who he's talking about. Uh, Meta Yahoo. This is he's this is Glazerson, and as you can see, it is very loosely. I mean, there's some terms in here, but they're kind of loosely uh, related in in some uh, ways, right? Um, but anyway. He points, he points out some important things about this, right? Uh, what you'll find on the web, which is basically a whole bunch of taxis because these things have no pattern to them. And you can't avoid taxis. They're all over the place. They happen to be, you know, related words, but it's easy to find in such a large matrix uh, so many related words. And the person who did this too in his own agenda uh, political agenda with the word on the lower left, no pun intended. Uh, but I don't, I try to stay away from this uh, randomness and I try to focus on this kind of prediction where I call it life repeating dreams or life repeating art. Um, so there's a Twilight Zone episode from 50 years ago that I like to refer to. This is a nurse who works in a morgue and a poor woman is having a dream that she's walking towards the morgue. And the nurse opens the door and says, there's room for one more, honey. So uh, it's kind of a scary dream. You can't notice it, this dream. You don't have a dream like this every day. So that's, that's part of the formula. It has to be something that really stands out uh, the first time. And then it, ha and then it repeats in an, am in an amazing way. Uh, a week later, this woman gets on a gets on a flight on a small airplane, or starts to get on the flight, and the stewardess, who looks just like the woman in the dream, 
opens the door and says, there's room for one more, honey. So he pretty much takes off and saves her life because the plane did crash after that. So this message is the same words repeating in a very interesting way. And that's what we look for in codes. For example, Spaceship Columbia, this is um, the best meeting of those two words, Spaceship of Columbia. Uh, we'll see, yeah, so. Something I just noticed in here, you know, with the word spaceship is I see the word judgment in there. And you guys remember when uh, Columbia broke apart? I remember that day. Uh, it came down in like Texas and in Louisiana, but I, I just saw that word there, judgment. Connected to that is the words, the word they will mourn in Hebrew. Now, a lot of people look at this and they say, it looks like a spaceship with a missing wing. So we're interested in this wing right here. Exactly these five letters. There could be actually thousands of ways of putting five letters on this. Now, guys, that shows structure. This is actually what they call a pictogram in the codes that, that is depicting uh, uh, what is very similar to the Delta Wing um, example of Columbia. Uh, and then you have in the same column, they will mourn, right? This is not an accident that this all came together like that. And this is uh, the point he's getting to is the rarity of of this it's it's got good clustering and proximity and uh it's a small skip right it's relatively small this table that we're looking at literally thousands of places to put them but we're interested before we even look in these specific five letters and it says finished by fire which is what happened to the columbia there was a hole in the left wing and this is the left wing because it's facing down and it caused the fire. And to repeat the whole, the whole uh, idea, in the plain text it says a consuming fire. Eish al This is, uh, this is the only place where the word fire in the Torah is combined with something that means consumed. So. Out of 300,000 letters, this repetition is right where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to throw in a few details because when you look at some of these codes, I don't want you to be mystified by some of the uh, symbols. Um, here is code of God. Uh, and this Dalet here is the fourth letter of the alphabet of the alphabet in Hebrew. And it means the fourth book of the five books of the Torah. So that's the book of Numbers. And this nine at the top is a skip distance, which is also the width of this matrix. Every nine letters we go to the next line. And in the orange and the green, we have the chapter and verse. If you learn what the letters correspond to, this is twenty-four, chapter 24, verse 17. Uh, finally, we have, we give credit on many of the codes to people who found them. This is uh, Eliyahu Bloom, a colleague of ours. Um, but basically, the, the code on the left is what we're looking at. Uh, but if you're interested in the details, there, there they are. And so how do we prove codes? And what we're going to do is prove the overall concept. We're not going to prove any one code. Uh, Let's look at specific examples. Codes about codes. Uh, code of God has a continuation of the word signs, which is used in Isaiah 41, 23, and other places in Isaiah. The word is atiot. It's a very interesting continuation for a code of God, but it's not repeated yet. And I'm not happy until I see something confirmed. And so what he's talking about is triangulation. That's, that's something that I've kind of coined is we want to see another code with, with a, a similar saying something similar. You, you get what I'm saying? So he's got code, the modern um, uh, uh, way of saying that in Hebrew and also Zophon, 
which is basically a, the ancient way of saying that zophon meaning hidden uh, right so uh, look at the skips for, uh, 1474 very small area we're literally in like one book uh, this being a skip of nine is literally like uh, a couple of verses um, but yeah so let's look at another place where the of God occurs. The first one was actually um, Sofen in Hebrew, which is the older language, uh, the older format. The new one is the modern Hebrew, which is pronounced like the English, code. So code of God in the, on the right side. And it is continued with the same word. The very same word. Atiot, atiot, and, and notice one's on top and then one's on the bottom. Uh, would virtually saying the same thing. I think that is an incredible find um, that they were able to triangulate um, this message. The same thing. And the vav in the middle means and. And that's correct. So signs and code of Yahuwah. One word in the right place. Uh, can be very significant, as it is here. Uh, God's names. Um, these are the three main names of God, as he tells Moses. In uh, Okay, so what he's got is Shaddai, Yahuwah, Elohim. Uh, and, of course, he's not going to say the name or write it out. He says Hashem, so uh, that's the, the reason he's doing that. Very small area, 182. The, he's pointing out the clustering and the vertical uh, anomalies. Uh, and has pretty much mastered the art of finding these vertical anomalies that are all kind of related and tell a story. Um, the, the, the statistic, you know, the, the, the fact that you have terms that it will appear vertical to the plain text uh, is an amazing anomaly that, that these things line up like that. Uh, it's incredible. And it shows it, by the way, it shows a divine hand. This is not natural, right? This is not naturally occurring uh, in all scripts, you know, all scripts, all books and things like that. There's a, a myth out there that you can find codes like this in Moby Dick. And that is not the case. You can find random codes, things that, that are kind of hit and miss him, but the clustering, the, the, the pattern, the structure behind it. Um, I equate it to like looking at DNA. Uh, it shows a divine hand. It just, these things just don't fall together like this. Chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. He says, I used to be known as Kel Shekrai, but from now on I'll be known as Hashem, Vodke Vodke. And God is the one speaking. All three names are the name of the one God, but he takes on different attributes uh, according to these names. Okay, so these are in a very small area, but let's see, it really is Kel Shakai, not just Shakai. And what do we have? Actually, seven occurrences of Kel with Shakai. So it's, it actually is a complete, uh, all three names completely there. Now, let's change the color for a second because we're going to focus on the red and the blue, the two main names of, of, of Hashem, Hashem and God. We're going to see if they repeat somewhere else. And the best place to look for them is in a long line uh, because there's only one. All right, now I want to point out something. Now, he's doing something I, I disagree with. He has changed the name of Yahuwah, right, to be respectful to the Jews. Now, this is a – he is a leftist Jew, by the way. That's why he took offense with um, – Glazerson's table has the leftists. He was saying, you know, he's, he's not being um, unbiased. He's being political, right? And this is why, because Art Levitt is a liberal Jew. Now, he is being respectful to the Jews and the fact that they don't write out the actual, the name. And I don't understand it because he was, or maybe it because it was, I don't understand why, why he didn't do that in the previous where it had yod hey vav -Hey. Um, but he does it here. He puts Yod Resh Vav Resh, right? As you can see, he's he's depicting that it's that it's Yahuwah, right? The name, uh, and then Elohim. Now I did go and find this uh, this very same table 
And uh, it is, in fact, yod heh vav -Hey. So I wanted to point that out. That That is not what it's, he's gotten written here. He has cut and pasted that um, to give you this effect. In the whole Torah, in such a long line. Uh, by the way, the, if you notice the rashes there in red, the really haze. But uh, we don't want people to print this out and throw it away because that's not respectful to Hashem's names. So they're printed here as rashes, but they're really haze. So this is again Hashem God. Uh, <clears throat> and it's the only place in Torah where they occur in one long stream. And we have Kel Shakai occurring in a, in a phenomenally repeating pattern. Shakai appearing on the right four times, Kill appearing on the left. And not only that, he doesn't point out that it's Kodesh Kodeshim, right? Kodesh Kodeshim, you guys know what that is? That is the Holy of Holies. Holy of Holies, yeah. yeah. 11 times. So this is, um, it's hard to overemphasize how unique this is because it, if you look through the entire 300,000 letters, you won't find such a repetition of Kel Shabbat with this skip. Only here, next to the only occurrence of Hashem God. This is what we're talking about. Unique occurrences, you know, even though the... And it's Yahuwah Elohim, by the way. It is, it is not the name God. Uh, it's Yahuwah Elohim. Just to be very clear. It has 300,000 letters. Uh, we're talking about unique occurrences of things occurring right together. Um, okay, so now, more repetition on top of the repetition. This says the name of shame, Akel, in light blue. Now what? How about that? Now that actually does that? say the, you know, the Shem, Ha'el, the name of El. Find this somewhere else in Torah. And here it is in a different place at the strip of one of three. And what are we what would be surprising for us is to find the red and the blue again. Hashem and God. And in fact, look at that. Here it is. <laughs> That's and crazy. It's Hashem. And it's in the ideal location, right next to extending from what we originally found. So you don't need uh, rocket science or higher math to be able to estimate how amazing this is. The Aleph here, for God's name, is about one out of 10. Because if you randomly look at letters, one out of 10 will be an Aleph. The Lamed is another one out of 10, very rough. Now he's talking so about the, the P value. One out of 10. So that's 10 to the fifth power, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. There is one in 100,000 chance that that word would be right there. And we have a right to measure that because we that's what we expected in, before we even looked. Uh, we get, there's an extra bonus for this word appearing here. All right, so let's, let's examine that. He's got the name of El, Elohim, yod He vav He, all in the same column. Now, that, that's, that's a rare anomaly. That's, that's not normal. Right, this was not uh, something that happened randomly. Right, this this shows a divine hand. Um, you know, every one of these codes is is at least one in a thousand. Most of them are a few orders of magnitude even more unlikely. <clears throat> Here is an this is one of my favorites, guys. Because if you go to Exodus four eight, you know what what this is all about, and it says, "I am Yahuwah." Uh, your Elohim, as, as you'll see, he will talk about here in a moment, which is incredible. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Another one with the simplest form of I am Hashem, vertically, with skip of only 16. And what do we have right on top there is your God. Again, it's about one out of 100,000 because there's five letters. Each 10, one, one, one in 10. And this is the most common continuation in the plain text. When it says, I am Hashem, it, it almost always says, Your God, right afterwards. Uh, so, you know, I don't, 
I don't know how to give this over so that you know how amazing it is. Uh, after 20 years of looking, I, I understand immediately how amazing it is, but my challenge is to, 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 show, it, to show it to others. I'm, cur I'm curious about the space, like 103 space in between. Right. Is that also a Gematria and Kabbalah too? This uh, 103 uh, is probably, probably has a lot of meaning. There's, we're only scratching the surface. We don't know a lot of what we're seeing. Uh, sometimes we do see some really interesting things with the numbers. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, there's actually a whole thing with Fibonacci numbers that I can show you sometime, which is uh, also phenomenal. Um, with the name Rudke Rudke appearing with skip 5 and 8 and 13 and 21 and 34 and 55 on the beginning of, of Leviticus, which is, you know, on the Fibonacci series. Mm -hmm. So that's a definite signal as well. Um, it's encoded within nature as well. Exactly. And galaxies, weather patterns. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to include that, but that's too much. <laughs> so if you heard it, good. Okay, uh, let's look at some things related to Messiah, also called Mashiach in Hebrew. Here's the smallest skip of the Messiah, HaMashiach, skip of five, continued with the word joy. Now he's demonstrating uh, extensions here. He's not necessarily putting together a uh, proper phrase or, uh, you know, even can be a question at some points. I did find things that are in the question. Um, but anyway, he is finding extensions in here, which is uh, another um, acceptable methodology. It, it um, also has meaning. But uh, extending from it. And the word rejoice over Latin, simply. So let's look for it somewhere else, which is our standard procedure. And by the way, we look for it somewhere else because we're trying to confirm. For, for years, we were trying to tell people who were skeptical. Yeah. Okay, so this is like triangulating. And in this case, what he's talking about in, in finding it somewhere else, what we have been doing is, is what? Taking phrases from the plain text. Um, just the other day, we were looking at, at things from Psalm 91. Because he knows my name, which we found encoded vertically in uh, an anomaly, which you would clearly put there for us to find. But we got our terms from the plain text. What he is doing is uh, th he found this anomaly based on extensions, and now he's going to triangulate by going to see if it's also an encoded phrase in somewhere else, right? So that is what he's pointing out. And you can see that the, the, um, the width on that is considerably larger. It's 18,102 as compared to five. Well, we were really looking for this. We promise you we were really looking for it and we found it. Because a priori is what that's called. You, you, you look for it before you see it, you look for it. And it's an extremely important concept. But we couldn't prove it to people. Well, what happens is the codes are proving it for us because the codes themselves repeat. So the first time it occurs, it announces the second time. And here it is. So that's important when we take the, that concept from the plain text. Uh, we, we triangulate the term that I use. Uh, he, he's using the word confirm, um, but it's the same, it's the same concept, um, and which I find very, very intriguing that uh, this is something he was teaching in this was uh, something that I was teaching you guys uh, just in a little different way. This is the second time. It's a priori the second time. Here it is, joy in this Mashiach appearing in a column and the word simply rejoice. And there's only a, you know, a few more interesting places where that word rejoice could be. Um, yeah, just, just to talk a little bit about a priori, you know, like if you see your friend Sam on the street, and you haven't seen him for 10 years, it's interesting, but it happens to everybody. But if you say that morning, I'm gonna see Sam today, that's an a priori announcement. And then you see him, you've narrowed it down from a thousand, old friends to one old friend. You've narrowed it down from a thousand days to one day. So it's a million to one. Did you get that? So in other words, uh, getting our, our term from the plain text is, is not subjective. 
<laughs> it is it is allowing that term that first witness to de determine what we look for right so uh this this is kind of what he's saying uh except he's doing it from from finding an actual code that gave him terms to look for but my um way of looking at it was the plain text giving us it works both ways either way it's triangulating that's why i say that um it's different ways of looking at the same words to you know either confirm something or disprove something uh, it triangulates uh, can you guys see that yes I, well, I do anyways. I don't know. What it is, but, yeah. I need an amen somewhere. <laughs> yeah. After I watched this video, that's exactly what I did and yeah. uh, with my code. So that my point, this is great methodology. This is how we should be searching because this is the more rare codes, right? So um, I'm sure he understands looking from the you know plain text. Uh, getting getting terms from that, but he is pointing out a way of doing it with your actual codes. You know, in this case, uh, an extension. His his initial find was the Mashiach. He found the other codes uh, post priori, right? Um, so it's after the fact. So and this is an an example of clustering in structure. I mean, this thing is not like scattered out and and drawn. It's all together, close proximity. Um, and it's it's clearly has form to it. That's why repetition is so important in all this, because the repetition establishes the a priori a priori. Okay. So here's another example of joy and Messiah somewhere else with a very small cluster, and it's continued with the word revenge, which we will, we will see again. And if you if you read the Torah and the Tanakh, you'll see that the that the idea of revenge is very important with Mashiach. It sounds harsh, but he's coming with a sword, guys. He's coming with a sword. That's what this means. Uh, we think the world is chaotic. To what? But he's taking out the wicked. He's taking revenge on the wicked, and it is harsh. But that is the way it is. We are in the time of you want to use the word grace or or favor. This is the time to get your house in order uh, and, and be uh, obedient to him. And, and you, you don't want to try to do that when he's on scene because now it's judgment time. He's coming with a sword. But, uh, the codes seem to tell us that in the end there will be justice. There will be revenge for those who have it coming to them. Uh, we're going to see this word again, repeat it as usual. Uh, but first, let's look at this some more with joy. Joy and Mashiach again, very small skip of eight in the same line. And it actually forms a whole sentence. Joy is coming, Mashiach will rise on high. Another Incredible. And a skip of eight, guys. That is like insane. Now let's look at Twin Towers for a second because the researchers I'm involved with, we were all very busy at that time of history. Um, now this is a very famous table that that uh, uh I've, I've actually shared on my channel before about this time where they took headlines from the hebrew papers in jerusalem about the attack they, they simply took terms from the headlines uh, and this is what what um you, you'll know what i'm talking about when you see the table so we found many things uh one of the simplest is just the word ben Laden. He will appear many times in any text the size of the Torah. So just seeing the word Ben Laden is not interesting. But it starts to get interesting when you see the continuations. You found this extensions. After you find the word Ben Laden. Blue or shiny. They're not relevant. They're not powerful like cursive. Look at the continuation here. Revenge belongs to Mashiach. There's the idea of revenge and Mashiach. All in one line with Ben Laden. It's not normal. It's not, it's not arena, it's not taxi cabs in New York. Um, okay. Uh, so then we have also some other interesting words. I won't get into too much, but destruction. I would give you the nickname of destruction. Very fitting. If you look at how that word is used in Tanakh. Because cities were renamed for destruction after they were destroyed. 
when we were settling the land thousands of years ago. Uh, so the whole act of renaming is connected to the, to the word destruction. So I will give you, Bin Laden, the nickname destruction. In other words, you are toast, Bin Laden. In other words, there is justice and there is optimism behind the chaos in our world. Okay. And just in case we're not convinced that this sentence was intentional, let's look at the last two words. Revenge belongs to Messiah. Here they are again, just repeated with uh, in the same location, just colored differently. Revenge belongs to Messiah. And this has a skip of 6598. It's the fourth minimal skip. You don't have to know what that means. Right? Okay, I said it. Ben Laden appears with many different skips, but this is the the fourth minimum. So he appears in interesting uh, patterns in other places as well. In any case, Revenge Belongs in Shift has a skip of 6598. Let's look at the same skip somewhere else. The same skip, 6598, and Revenge appears in a different place. Here it's in, in the right side, it's uh, in, in Genesis. On the left side, it was in uh, Leviticus. Uh, it only appears three times with this skip in the whole Torah. And this one happens to have, belongs to, Mash to Mashiach, crossing it with the smallest possible skip of two. So again, it's a repetition which confirms the original message. Okay, I'm going to fly through these uh, and feel free at home to rewind. But it's the same concept of extensions, I'll give you the floor. showing repetitions, showing the intention. Give me Light. The yeah, you weren't uh, one of the, the, the first things, the first thing that was created. Uh, light from light. We, we learn from our sages, including Rabbi Eliezer ben Hanus, one of the greatest sages of the Talmud, including Rashi and others. That light comes from light, that God created light from light. So, Nachman Bambach, one of our uh, colleagues, found light from light crossing itself in a very interesting pattern. Waves of light is the continuation. Light appearing again, not yet interesting, but look at that continuation, the light from God. Seven letters continuing uh, right there. Uh, Another place with skip of only two, the light from light, with the word God vertically, with the word formed, God formed the light from light, which is what the sages tell us. Another place, light from light, continuation, Yudke Vulke, from a shim, again from light, or a horizontal light, the hidden light extended from that. Waves of light from light, you saw those same words from God. And it's extremely small question. Light from light with a skip of only two. With with K Vulke, Hashem. So so it goes on and on, the, the, the repetition. But what notice something else. We've been looking at really um, important things. Why do we do that? And because the question can arise, well, what happens if you look at thousands of topics, you're going to eventually find something interesting. But look what we look on the left side, look at what we've just been doing. We've been looking at codes about codes, codes about God, codes about Mashiach, codes about one of the biggest news stories in the last few decades, 9-11, codes about light. So these are top importance. And what if only these things uh, succeeded and everything else failed? It's still interesting because the most important things are encoded. It turns out that, that everything else pretty much succeeds, so that's not a question. But it's easier for us to focus on the important things because those are uh, finite. And, and we, we have you know, only one lifetime to look at this stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, what does it all mean? I take two simple meanings from it all. 
Uh, the codes about codes and about God and about light, to me, they, they're like a soldier <coughs> that somebody wrote this. For, I agree. Not, uh, not for some random people. Uh, and what about the codes about Messiah and 9 11? I look at that as a very optimistic, uh, comforting kind of thing, uh, as I mentioned before. Those are the two things in red that I take from the codes. All the other messages that people get from codes, I take with a mountain of salt because, you know, I'm a skeptic at the same time. I'm a total believer in the codes, as you can see, but uh, the way they're used, they're really misused quite a, quite a bit. Um, so that's why I'm saying beware of the unconfirmed. Uh, here is a code about asteroid in September 2015. A few months before September 2015, I uh, put this on my website and I said, don't pay attention to it. And I noticed the word rumor crossing it. Uh, and I noticed that this, these words are not repeated anywhere else in such a small area. So beware. So please, uh, if you have any other questions now or in the future. So all in all, that is an excellent presentation, guys. He's, uh, he's pointing out the very good methodology uh, in that. I was able to go and um, replicate every one of those, um, every one of those tables. I, I want to point out one in particular, um, and and read I, the scripture there. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say I I concur with you that that was a very good presentation, and the methodology is rock solid. What he's doing. Yeah. So this says uh, he didn't go into the scripture. But I, I want to hear, and then I think uh, Rick Rick wants to uh, share something with you guys. It says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, right? I was able to find codes in there. I was also able to find my name um, in in here, which is, um, I think, important. Based on a, one of the codes that he was sharing you got with you guys in the, in the presentation, let me show that also why I... Hold on. Yep, it's this one. Because it has names and signs um, crossing each other, right? So this is the one he was one of the ones he was showing you guys in the in the presentation, which is um, hidden of Yahuwah or codes of Yahuwah, and then it's got atiot, which is signs, but names crosses over that. He didn't point that out in in his presentation, but I saw that there, and I thought, wow, that's that's pretty cool because we're seeing that as a confirmation with the personalization of some of these uh, codes. So let's go back. Are you guys seeing this? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the original one I was showing you um, and read that scripture. Which is, I am you or your Elohim. All right. Let's see. So this was Exodus. We're going to start at four seven. All right, so um He's dealing with Moses here, right? Let's back up and get some context. And Moses answered and said, Behold, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice, for they will say, Yahuwah had not appeared unto thee. Right? And Yahuwah said unto them, What is that in thy hand? He said, It is a rod. He said, Cast it to the ground. And he cast it to the ground and became a serpent. And Moses fled from it uh, from before it. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became his rod in his hand. They that may believe that Yahuwah Elohim for the, of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, hath appeared to thee. And, you, and Yahuwah said furthermore to him, Now put thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and he took it out, and behold, it was a leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand to thy bosom again and he put his hand to thy bosom again and plucked it out 
of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again to his, to his other flesh. And it came to pass that if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, right? So we're talking about signs and wonders, right? The voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken to, to thy voice, that if thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, which the water hath taken out of the river, it shall become blood on the dry land. And Moses said unto you, O oh, oh my, you are, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since hast thou spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And you have said unto them, What hath man, man's mouth, or maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have I not I, Yahuwah? Now therefore go, and I will, uh, I will be with thee, thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O Yahuwah, sin, I pray thee, the hand of him who will thou sin. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moses. And he said, because he's not one to do this, right? And he said, is it not Aaron, the, uh, the Levite, thy brother? And I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And he will see thee and be glad of heart. And, um, you know, something I'm realizing is where he found this. Um, I didn't pull that table up. But this appears again. And I'm pretty sure it's where um, he speaks to him through the through the burning bush, which is not here. This is the original one he found. So I've just kind of boogered that up. Um, anyway, I thought it was something else. It's not what I thought it was. So uh, with that, let me stop share. Um, I think Rick wants to share something. It's also about the, the name, right, Rick? All right, so I'm going to have to. Good job. Good job. Can you guys hear me? Can you? I can't. Yep, yep. We can. Oh, I can. Yep. All right, just a second. <clears throat> so I don't know if you've seen the little bit of a, like a, it's not, it's not an upset or anything, but more like a concern uh, recently with Darla on Discord. Uh, she... Um, she uncovered a video, a rather new video of a gentleman. I think it was his his, uh, his channel is called Devoted to Yah, and um, he's a nice man. I, I don't want to uh, discourage him one iota. He's doing great work, but there is something that he said that uh, Darwin uncovered, and then she shared it with me, and then I knew, like the minute I knew it, I was like, how could that be? How could he possibly say anything like that? She says it's easy, um, and and so here's what we were talking about. All right, can you guys see my screen? Can someone say yes? Anybody, please say yes. 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 Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's coming in. It's coming in delayed, kind of like a echo. So, um, so she goes. It's easy. So let me. Here's the, here's the concern that Yahuwah's name was not known to people prior to Moshe. Was it or was it not known prior to Moshe? Because Moshe says, you know, who am I? Who, who you know? Who am I gonna? Who, who should I say is sending me? And then he goes, I am that I am, right? 
your hook. And then, so that's the first like concern. Like it sounds like it's the first time that he's revealing his name. And then in Exodus 6 3, it says, I, I, this is in Exodus, in the Torah. So you, you've got the time frame. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, by the name of Elohim Almighty, but my name, Yahuwah, was not known to them. So this was the verse that um, the gentleman was quoting. He goes, he goes, his name was not known prior to, um, uh, uh, prior to Moshe. I was not known to these people. Well, Darla and I started researching this and thought, you know, maybe this is actually a question. Maybe the more accurate translation should be, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, and by the name of Elohim, by the name, by my name, Yahuwah, was I not known to them? It, it wasn't my name known to them? And here's the verse that it, it pulls it apart, you know, here in, inside of ISA. And, you know, you can see all the, 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 the text if you want. I could put this up on, on uh, Discord. So just to reaffirm that this, um, that his name was known in Genesis 4-6. So this is in Genesis. And said to him, also there was born a son, and his name was called Enos. Then began, then began men to call upon the name of Yahuwah. So it's right there in Genesis 4.26. At that time, they started to call on the name of Yahuwah. So, but it gets better. Eve knew. And Adam knew he his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've got a man from the Lord. Here trans is translated as Yahuwah. And Adam knew he oh, I got it in there twice. Adam. And Abraham knew. Abraham called the name, the place Yahuwah, as it is said to this day, in the Mount of Yahuwah, it shall be seen. And then in, in Genesis 21 33, Adam, Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of Yahuwah, the everlasting Elohim. Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov knew. He was built there an altar to you and called the name of called on the name of Yahuwah. Abraham knew, Eve knew, Lee knew. Lee conceived and bare a son, and she called his name River, for she said, Surely. Yahuwah hath looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. And Sarah knew. So here, Sarah is actually mocking Yahuwah. I, 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 in this, and it says, Yahuwah said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? So she's laughing like she can't believe it. Is anything too hard for Yahuwah? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, and according to the time of life, and you, Sarah shall have a son. And then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. So she got caught mocking. Like Yahuwah goes, hey. And, and so, so she got intimidated, and he said, nay, thou didst laugh. So there was this conversation with Sarah and Yahuwah. Where and where Sarah clearly knew his name, Laban and Bethuel. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, "The thing proceeds from Yahuwah. We can't speak unto thee good or bad." There's more, um, and and God put together this really complete. Um, this is all Darla's work. So she went through it all, and she got really like specific because it's really important. It's really important. There are, and, and I submit the reason it's gotten um, mis, um, uh, misinterpreted is because of the mistranslation. I believe that that uh, Exodus six three should have been a. I'm trying to move this thing. Okay, there we go. 
use. I submit that by my name, Yahuwah, was I not known to them? I believe that that's what happened, as opposed to it being a sentence and a statement of fact. So that's all I have. Um, I, I, we can open it up for questions, or um, if anybody else has anything to add on to this. Okay. Darla wants to share. I have a question, and that's how in Scripture would you know if a statement is a question or, like, do they use punctuation, or how would you know? I don't think. Yeah, it's a great question. Hold on, I gotta shut mine off. Um, I think uh, in this particular case, Anne, it has to do with the fact that we can tell that he, they weren't, they did know him by his name. Um, in Le, in Leviticus. This is in the Stones Tanakh. I was reading the beginning of Leviticus to my um, kids because we're getting ready to start reading um, the book of Leviticus. And in the Stones Tanakh, they have a little intro to some of the major books. And um, so the, the question is about, did they know him as El Shaddai or did they know him as Yahuwah? And I was reading in the intro here about Leviticus and it's talking about I'll just read it to you guys so you get the gist but we're looking for the 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 meaning of um Yahuwah here in this in what they're writing here or um what they're what they're sharing here about the name it says in the lexicon of the Talmudic sages the book of Leviticus is called uh tour the tour of the Kohanim or priest because most of the book deals with the laws of the temple service and other laws relating to the priest and their responsibilities. And we know that he has a, a kingdom of priests. Um, the opening chapters of the book deal almost exclusively with animal korbanos, a word that, in, and they're using the, um, I think this is a Sephardic pronunciation with a, with a, t a ta being, having a S sound. Um, so this would be korbanot a word that is commonly translated as either sacrifices or offerings, but the truth is that the English language does not have a word that is accurately, that accurately expresses the concept of a korban. The word sacrifice implies that the person bringing it is expected to deprive himself of something valuable, but Elohim finds no joy in his children's anguish or deprivation. Offering is more positive and closer to the mark. Indeed, we use it in our translation, this, this stones to knock here, but it too falls short of the Hebrew korban. Does Elohim require our gifts to appease him or assage his anger? And if he did, of what significance is a bull or lamb to him? If you have acted righteously, what have you given him? Elohim does not become enriched by man's largesse. The root of the word korban, which is kuf resh bet, uh, to come near. The person bringing an offering comes closer to Elohim. He elevates his level of spirituality. That is the true meaning of the word and the significance of the act. So kufresh bet means to come near. For modern man who has been weaned on the delusion that anything not measurable or replicable is unworthy of serious consideration and who after all is the product of over 19 centuries without the temple, the notion of animal offering seems bizarre, even primitive. However, let us imagine ourselves among our ancestors when the first Kohanim brought their first offerings in their newly built tabernacle. There was a palpable recognition of Elohim's esteem resting upon their handiwork and a miraculous heavenly fire descending to consume the offerings. Could they have doubted the efficacy of the service? Would we have felt otherwise if we had been there too? So they're talking about this, this um, tower of this pillar of fire coming down <clears throat> and consuming the sacrifice. The commentators offer various rational and meta-rational explanations for the offerings. Without attempting to more than barely scratch the surface, we briefly summarize one thought. Wherever the Torah speaks of the offerings, it uses the four-letter name of Elohim that signifies his mercy. So we're talking about the name Yahuwah signifying his mercy. Whereas El Shaddai has to do with his provision, and also it has to do with the land. Um, it has to do with him as uh, providing all that we need. 
The offerings are the means he gives us to rejuvenate, to rejuvenate ourselves, to provide us a means to bring elevation and purity into our lives. It is when man serves Elohim this way that he finds the offering to be a satisfying aroma, meaning, as the sages explain, that Elohim says, as it were, I have commanded and my will has been done. So they're bringing up the fact that every time the Torah speaks about these offerings, which really means to come near, it uses the four-letter name of Yahuwah that signifies his mercy. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right? So that one verse in, in uh, Shemot or Exodus 6.3 brings up both of his names. He was known uh, as El Shaddai, the, the Almighty, the one who provides, and the one who also cuts off, if those of you who have studied your modules and know what Shaddai has to do with. Um, he knows when to give and he knows when to cut us off and for us to, to deal on our own. Um, and then... But it's also bringing up, but by my name, Yahuwah, was I, uh, was I not also known by them? So that is, in this particular place, it's saying that four-letter name has to do with his mercy. Wow. And you're right. It is in there. El Shaddai is in there. Yeah, the both names are there. Both names are presented there. El Shaddai is in there. Were you done? Yep. Very good. There's two aspects of Yahuwah. I like it. Any thoughts, questions? Anything to add? Well, how, how many names does he have? Just those two. No, I think it's over 70, isn't it? He says that Yahuwah is his name of remembrance yeah. to all generations. Yod Hei Vafe would be the root name, or I guess El would be the most. Elohim is a title. Yeah. The mighty one. He's the mighty one who overcomes all the overcomers. Because a shad is a demon. A shad so the, the, the use of the different names um, is also implying an aspect of, right. of him. A characteristic, yeah. Mm. Mm. That's oh, correct. Like right. Which is, you know, Lord. Um, you are of the host. Of the, of the armies. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got, and, and you've got like, Yahuwah Rapha. Who is the healing. Healer. Right. Um, There's like 365. Some guy came up with like 365 he found. Yeah. Right. In, 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 in all the reference. Well, so any, any, Anything else? You guys got codes, Ann? Hi. Uh, and okay, yeah. Is anybody else? Because I I'm looking at something here. You guys got to see. <laughs> going once, going twice. Sold. Go ahead, brother. I took the word. Oh, by the way, uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Rick and Sister Darla, for sharing. Um, this is the uh, word that I was dissecting that was that's supposed to uh, represent dispensationalism or dispensation. Okay, and uh, maybe I can blow it up just a little bit more. And there we go. Mem, Dalit, Bet, Resh, Nun, Wav, Tau, Aleph. So if you turn that in reverse, actually it says more things as well. <laughs> if you look at it in reverse, you've got Aleph, Tau, and then you have uh, Wav, Nun, Resh, that's Lamp, and Bet, Dalit, Mem, that's Blood. Or in the blood. <laughs> so there's another message going up the other way as well. And uh, let me see. I particularly chose this ELS. It's 4, 1443. 1,443 letters across. I'm looking at like 50 or something characters wide and about 50 characters deep 
um, here you have the word people or peoples, it's plural. Om, om is people and omum, that's uh, tribes. That's the word that's being used for Gentile in uh, Romans 11.25. Um, now there, here down below, I just looked at it, you have L and you have Ya. <laughs> L and Ya. If you put it together, it makes a funky word, but you've got L and Ya here. And you also have, uh, Yobel this way and you have the Yobel over here Now look what's sitting on the bottom of it the word code <laughs> I think that's interesting But uh, maybe you could help me find some more uh, ELS's in here and make this a, a, a group effort Any thoughts? Any yeah, any any thoughts? Do you have any uh do you see anything in, in this code or or around it? Again, you have L going up this way. Yeah, I do see where you've got the Yobel. Right? And then right up under it, I don't know if it's in the text or if it's just, there you go, that Tav, and then go back, Mim, and then Olive. You got Amet. Right, there you go, Amet. Oh, Amet, okay. Yeah. What is that access term, Chris? <laughs> I'm not Dispens sure how to pronounce Dispensational, it. What's what, what is used in uh, the Aramaic for the dispensational? Oh, let, okay. let's, let's coin it as... Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, speak, speaking of uh, the Yobel. Okay. Oh, that looks like that phrase from your from that other table. Yeah. It is. And you it use is. it as an access. Oh, okay. Uh, it as an access term. Sorry, I'm not in the loop. I, I had to step away for a second. I just came back. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I met. Actually, it's not very good to do this in Code Finder because if I put a meta, well, yeah, I got you can isolate it so just one a skip of one <clears throat> there you go actually it's there a couple of times uh that's actually uh, tribes What could be, did anybody think of any uh, access terms or uh, search terms? Israel. Is Israel? Yeah. Search. Yeah, it's done. Look at that. It's, it's, uh, I don't think it's spelt the same in the Aramaic, but you do have it in reverse down here at the ELS of minus one. Yeah. Down here. That's interesting. Wow. Where, wow. Where is that? Colossians 1.22, to you he hath now given peace by the body of his flesh and by his death, that he might establish you in his presence holy without blemish and without offense. Hmm. And that would be... Oh, right at the very end, without, yeah. without offense, uh, Yod, Shin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed. Oh, wow, that's pretty profound. Yeah, and it's at an ELS of minus one too, so that's that's a really good anomaly. Leave that Is, in. 
Is Shalom there? Uh, shal shalom. 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 Peace. Shalom. Yeah. Uh, how do you spell it? Shin. Lamed. Vav. Mem. Mem? Yes. Okay. Search. Huh. Here. I'll search. Yeah, they're pretty out there. There's one, Shalom. Mm -hmm. It's kind of long, but it's there. This one here, down here, is uh, closer to the... I'm going to leave it in. Shorter skip, too. Yeah. Well, when we're talking about this, we're talking about the Obel, we're talking about salvation, uh, Oh, I got a word. If we look at the the word acceptable from Isaiah 61. Acceptable year. Some year of acceptance or yeah. <clears throat> so Resh Zadi Wav Noon. Rash Zadi Wapnoon. So we have it three times. Oh, it's there. That's really, oh, actually. That should be almost right underneath where it says Yo Bell. It, it's right next to it. Well, Let me uh, fix this one here. So, two eight eight nine. So what I'm doing is I can fix I can fix this so it, it doesn't keep showing all the results every time. So you can fix the number in its settings. And now when I search again, it's not going to, it only brings up that one down here. So now you have the word acceptable <laughs> right next to the word, the yo bell. What about ex Exodus? Yeah, the greater Exodus. Exodus? How would you spell that? Or gathering. Gathering would work. Gathering. That would, that would be a soft. A soft. Oh, yeah, right. The, a soft. I can just leave it like that because uh, the psalmic is a rare letter and so is the pay. They're rare enough, so. Uh, they're all over the place. <laughs> but we have some, some in the, uh, we have a soft down here in the plain text. Uh, is that in Revelation? Ephesians 6. Or it be the. And also for me, that lang language may be given me in the 
opening of my mouth so that I may boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel of which I am a messenger in chains that I may utter it boldly as I ought to utter it. And you have the word Asaph, gathering. Uh, what would be the word gospel? That would probably be it. Let me look at my book. Asaph, Ephesians 6.19. There, it's the very last word. There, Dalit, Sama, Bet, Resh. Alev Tau. And in my IS, I can oops, bring that back up. Or actually, I can just type it in from here. That would be Dalit, Samak, Bet, Resh. Yeah, Resh. Bet, Resh. Bet, Resh. Got it three times. Once in the plain text down here, this is the word gospel. Not bad, not bad, but still not. Uh, I would be the only one worth keeping in there. Any other? Uh, otherwise, I'm probably just going to let this go and uh, let Brother John. Anybody else got because they want to share before we close the day? Or any questions on your um, modules? None? Well, all right. Well, I think I'm going to close it right here, guys. It's been a great class today. A lot of good stuff. Um, Going once, going twice. Anything else you guys want to add before I close? All right, we'll see you in the next class. Let me just pray us out, and uh, we'll see you then. Avina Makina, we are so thankful, Father, what you are doing in this uh, group of people, Father, that the revelation that you're bringing. We just give you all the glory and the praise. Father, I ask that you go with them this week, that you keep them protected, that you continue to nurture them, Father, in your word. Uh, and that you reveal yourself in a mighty way to them. Uh, keep them protected from the enemy and bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. See you guys. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We love Thank you. you. Amen and shalom. Amen shalom. shalom.